uh, here for a second. Tilray, marijuana, whichever one you want to talk about. Yeah, the vo the volatility continues, and I got to give credit where credit is due. Maddie, you have nailed these candles in this price action three days in a row, I believe. Uh, you know, on the first big green candle driving up, you're like, momentum is there. Don't overthink momentum. Yesterday, it was very different. You gave analysis that it felt like topping, especially intraday, as that candle just did not price out well. Here we are back down today, 40% on Tilray. Marijuana stocks are down 20%, 30% across the board. But this is after a huge, what are we talking about, a run from... 10 to 70 back down to 38 so it's just crazy volatility right now and there's so much speculation about what is happening around these these areas of the market what actually it means matt what is your take on this right now uh, number one it's it's a very difficult read both from a psychological perspective as well as from a technical perspective uh -huh. um yesterday what i saw was was just quite frankly i saw a volatility shift and, and because I saw the volatility shift and it reminded me a little bit of what happened the week before with GameStop, I just felt like it was, it was, it was changing. And quite frankly, we, we looked at GameStop yesterday as well. And I said, okay, you're, you're looking at the same type of time frame, and yeah, you're, you, you, you're seeing the volatility shift a little bit. And so yesterday I, was, I had a different take than I did the day before, but that's going to happen on, on these types of price movements. And, Quite frankly, I don't think the pain's done here. I, I, I don't, but I do think you you have some key, you know, Tim, as you and I were talking about it earlier today, because you're in a trade on Tilray, you know, and, and you were trying to talk about, okay, how, how are you going to handle this and how are you going to handle the management, uh, that whole conversation. We were breaking that down earlier. And I said, you know, with, with if, if this is a repeat of GameStop, the pain's not done. I mean, you, you, you're talking $20, $20 on Tilray, maybe literally throughout the weekend. But you do have some key levels of support that you can look at to say, okay, where should I put a stop loss here? If you're in a trade, now again, any stop loss on a market like this can be absolutely destroyed again. I mean, it can be absolutely destroyed. Gaps can destroy it, volatility can destroy it, especially as, as those bid ask spreads get wide in volatile moments. I mean, it, those stop losses can't be trusted the same way if you're looking at AT&T, for, for example. But if you are looking for some key metrics to look at, you need to drop this down into an intraday time frame. Drop it down into like a 30-minute 30, 30 time frame. And you'll see uh, you'll see a couple different things. Number one, what you will see is you will start to see momentum start to slow down right now. So you're seeing that momentum start to slow down right as it's starting to get into that gap range. And so you're starting to, to find that support right there in the 34 to 35 handle. And so that's an area of support that you need to identify because if that gets clipped, $30 happens in moments, not not a day. It happens in moments, like literal moments. And so and so you got to be aware of that because if it does clip, 30 is the next stopping point. If 30 doesn't stop it, 25 is the next stopping point. And so you do have some key points in that chart that could stop this short-term volatility, but it's extreme volatility with minor support levels. And so when you have minor support levels in a volatile condition, they don't play a massive role. They can just play a short-term role. I think this pain continues, but again, you still have some support levels that you can identify that could stop the pain, 35, 30, 25. And, and, and those are some big numbers when we're talking about a stock that's pricing at $38 right now, guys. And so yeah. again, it's going to be volatile. It's going to be crazy train. And, and, and it's, it's too volatile for my blood. I can tell you that this, 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 this isn't me. This isn't Greg. This, this, this it's just too volatile for, for, for my standard swing trading mentality. But when you're looking at it from a support perspective, you're at this point, if you're in a trade, the analysis has, has, has left and you're in the, the begging and hopeful stage of please for the love of God, 35 hold, <laughs> because if it doesn't, it's going to get ugly. And I do think given this volatility shift, man, you get, what do they call that? Diamond hands? 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Is that like <laughs> Well, so if if is this gonna is this gonna go quietly in the night like GameStop or do you think this dip gets bought? I don't know, man. Um can I give you my perspective on this? I, one? I, I, I'm just going to say, how long is this Reddit storyline going to play out here? Because they're going to get blasted over and over again in this, guys. Yeah. I mean, over and over again, they're going to get blasted because they don't. What they don't understand is Wall Street has co-opted this entire situation, and yeah. algorithms are dominating this price movement right now. This has nothing to do with Reddit, guys. Nothing. This is all an algorithm story at this point. 100% agree with that. And anybody who understands markets knows that this is uh, big boys fighting with lots of money, pushing prices around. It's, it's a big huge boys fighting other big boys. It's a huge poker game, guys. That's exactly mm. right. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. I mean, if you're getting involved in these momentum kind of companies and moves, we were talking to our nephew earlier today and he's like, man, that's just crazy. I mean, why would it go up and then go down like that? Because I think it would be really cool to, to invest in these kind of companies for the future. And, uh, you know, so like young people are getting pulled into this kind of stuff, right? They get pulled into these movements, they get pulled into these waves. Hopefully yeah. there's lessons that we can learn from this kind of stuff uh, as well. And, you know, the volatility is not sustainable. This is not normal in markets to have a stock go up 50%, down 40%, day by day by day by day. 99% of market participants would be wise just to avoid these, treat them like popcorn stocks until you can get better setups. Now, Tyler, can it set up and have a trade available? It absolutely could, but yes. that's not today. <laughs> that, oh, no, no. That, that, that's not here yet. Nope. And it would take quite a bit of more information for it to develop, show you tradable signals, that kind of stuff before we can get there, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, and I wonder too, I mean, is, is MJ the more sane way of, of playing this? versus That's that how I traded it. I went and did the ETF because there's so many players in there that – are not profitable, number one. <clears throat> too much news around them, too many earnings yeah. reports. In fact, uh, Aurora Cannabis is coming out with earnings, what is it, next week? ACB, a few other those, and they're going to be volatile just on that. Yeah. Also, um, Tyler, wh when I'm trading stock particularly, I don't mind the ETF if it has you know options where I can protect it, sell calls against it, what have you. But you know, when in doubt, the ETF is a lot more, uh, what do you call it, conservative versus volatile, yeah. and especially in earnings season. And, uh, you know, I like the option strikes, same as you. But another thing is most of these stocks, when you get into growth stocks, sentiment stocks, like I was talking about yesterday, um, they're hard to borrow, meaning a lot of brokers are not going to let you short them. So when you mm -hmm. see a pullback like this, this isn't your retail investor shorting because you're not allowed to, <clears throat> okay? Like even Thinkorswim, uh, TD Ameritrade, second biggest broker in the world. They won't, they won't let me short this. So the only people I can short it are people that are allowed to or algorithms or institutions. So this is profit-taking and it's profit-taking large if you're a smart retailer, but it really, really solidifies my point yesterday. I, I, you know, I played MJ. And I talk to Matt every day about it. Like, okay, do we see topping here? And of course it's very volatile, but I moved my stop up. I had three different areas of stop. So I got layered out on a 15 minute, you know, the hourly and the daily chart. I got woke up to being stopped out and I said, Hey, that was a fun ride. You know, I'm out. Um, yeah. I grabbed my profit. And if I was not a trader and knew about stops, I don't know. I would just be in a world of, uh, like you said, like your nephew, what do I do here? You know, mm -hmm. but um, well, and what you do is you start learning technical analysis, because as we indicated yesterday, all of these areas of the market were coming into major, major, major resistance zones. Mm -hmm. Tilray was getting into the uh, if you'll go back to Tilray very quickly, Til Tilray was getting into those major support zones that were all the way back to the IPO level right there at the, that 67, 66 handle. I mean, you were coming into major, major resistance zones. MJ, MJ was coming into major uh, resistance zones of 35. And so, yeah, as we indicated yesterday, the volatility was, it was changing and you were coming into some major resistance zones and you probably should have taken some action in that. Yeah, yeah and then, you know, still way above the 10 day and the 20 day moving average. I would like to see it settle down technically and do a doji setup candle. 
Um, oh, I, I, there, there can, there could be a trade coming up. Oh yeah, yeah. right. That there could. That mm-hmm. trade though is not when you're down nineteen point six percent and simply the intraday no, is no, just no. stop selling. Like this, that's not a reason to buy simply because people have stopped taking profit today. Yeah. And, re- and that's true, whether it's up or down tomorrow, by the way, is you yes. have to use technical analysis and map out probabilities and entry points and use your rules. Can't just get swept up in the emotions of the markets flying around. So I think there's a lot of great lessons for anybody out there at any experience level from these moves here recently, you know, that you can apply. If, so. if you use GameStop as the key metric in understanding these volatile moments, Look at the two days following what that big down day. Remember, I was looking at GameStop yesterday in the halftime report saying this is why this volatility is changing and why I'm uh, concerned about it is because you had that big no sell day on GameStop followed by that big up day on that weird doji and then volatile craziness ensued. And what happened? It again went to 400 back down to 200 before it did start settling in around that 50 handle. And so, yeah, I, I don't think the vo- I, I certainly believe the volatility has shifted yesterday, but that doesn't mean it's going to go straight down. It's going to be a battle. And if you can withstand that battle, i.e. diamond hands, good luck to you. But if you if GameStop's the example, you don't want it. And, and the end of GameStop is the example Man, you got to think there's a little bit of pain coming at MJ and, and some of those marijuana plays that, that had some of the same type of price movement. 